can I have your attention, please? Uh, I'd like to welcome you to the College of Arts and Sciences noon hour two minute lecture series. And uh, we're celebrating the history of basically the College of Arts and Sciences of Liberal Arts at Minot State University. And I'd like you to welcome uh, the Assistant Professor of Art, Ryan Stander, who will speak with us today about land matters. So welcome, Professor Stander. Thank you. Land matters, uh, to me, is a fun and evocative play on words. If we take it literally, it suggests the significance or the importance of land. But it also refers to the matter or the physical attributes, the physical substance of the land itself. And yet, in the third sense, it refers to a topic that's being considered. And today, the topic of land, it's the landscape of place. So first, I think it's relevant that we uh, ask, what is place? In many ways, the commonness of place seems to speak for itself. Spatial language is everywhere, and we use it almost interchangeably, depending upon specificity. Space is abstract, open, expansive. Place is particular and local, here and there. And yet they are slippery words. When pressed, their simplicity slides away into a complex philosophical terrain. And yet we are not the first to wrestle with these ideas. Aristotle preferred the idea of topos as an objective point, like a topographical map or GPS system uh, th that exerts no influence on those who enter that place. In contrast, Plato preferred the term Cora, which is the etymological root of choreography. And this suggests this, a reciprocal dance between the person and the environment. Place is then both a physical location and a particular experience of being in the world. And it's this latter characterization of being in the world that has driven the recent resurgence of place, with many turning to Martin Heidegger's Dasein, uh, which roughly suggests being there or dwelling within. For Heidegger, authentic humanity is rooted in place. It carries deep connotations of care and cultivation. Place as dwelling creates political, ethical, spiritual, communal, and aesthetic aspects. It finds intimate connections to our, our memory and collective stories. Place as dwelling is about the construction of meaning, a sense of belonging, participation, and commitment. Place is space that has capacity to be remembered and evokes what is most precious. Place is not neutral, and the landscape is not a mere backdrop to our endeavors. Rather, our relationship with the land is reciprocal. As we shape it, it shapes us. Places are social products. They reveal something about our culture and our priorities. We do this through placemaking activities. We build, we redecorate, we hang art, we manicure our lawns, we turn space into meaningful place. What once was just your house becomes your home through these place-making activities. Place is everywhere, layered in multiple meanings, and it is contested. So we do well to think about our world in these terms. Place is concerned with many things, urban sprawl, food deserts, gated communities, gentrification, places concerned with globalization, tourism and consumerism, what is deemed public or private. Place is concerned with refugees and homelessness, border disputes and walls. Place is also about natural resources, their use and abuse. Place is about how we tell our national stories through monuments, parks, and neighborhoods. Place is concerned with sacred and secular, ritual and hospitality. Place is everywhere. Today I encourage you to take a moment to think about your places. Think critically about them. 
ask yourself what values and forces have shaped them. What kinds of places are you creating for yourself and for others?